Thousands of domestic violence defendants are released to pretrial services every year in order to follow their terms of release. But how are they monitored? And what happens if they don't follow the rules? Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Valerie Cavazos. Tonight, our continuing 13 News investigation, Plea for Help, has found flaws in the system. Angel Carmona Rodriguez has confessed to strangling his ex-girlfriend and the mother of his child, Gracie McDonnell. A judge released him under the supervision of pretrial services, but Gracie questions whether he's been supervised at all. I want to just, I want to feel free. Free to live a normal life. But Gracie McDonald instead feels fear, worried the father of her child, Angel Carmona Rodriguez, will seek revenge after she reported he strangled her. He since pleaded guilty to the felony crime. Less than a day after his arrest 10 months ago, a judge released Angel under the supervision of pretrial services. But Gracie says there's little to no supervision. They give him these conditions of release and no one makes sure he's doing it. His terms of release spelled out in this pretrial services document. Angel cannot be within three blocks, 1800 feet of Gracie's home and work. But Gracie says Angel has violated that order every time he's shown up for work. He works right across from my work. His car is facing my work. How close is he? This Google map shows that the job location on the northeast side is located only about a block away, well within the three block boundary. We did confirm it with the business owner that he works there. And Gracie's mother, Sharon, says she has feared for her daughter's life. He knew she was working there, right? Absolutely. She's been working there the duration of their relationship. So you actually have a line of sight. You could see him? Yeah, he's literally, my work's right here. He's right here. Have you seen him? Uh, yeah, I've seen him outside multiple times. Why do you think he's working there? Um, there's no reason other than watching me. He can work literally anywhere else. This document reveals that deputies arrested Angel at a different location, miles away. The status update document shows pretrial services did not know Angel switched jobs until Gracie and Sharon reported it to them on December 20th. Months earlier, both reported to PTS that Angel also lives within the three block boundary. The document shows it wasn't until December that PTS called Angel. He told the staffer he still lives at the same address, four miles away, but Sharon checked. So I did call back to pretrial services and said, hey, I have this information. This gentleman who actually lives at that address says that Angel does not live there. And she was told he never lived there. I checked it out and verified Angel doesn't live there after talking with the tenant who actually lives at that location. And they didn't even check. They were just like, okay, sounds good. So oh, not only is he violating that three block rule, he's violating his requirements to report. After Sharon called in December, PTS sent the information, the status update, to the court. But while on the call, the pretrial staffer told Sharon something she didn't expect to hear. I asked if they go and confirm, and he said, no, we don't do that. But part of pretrial's job, stated on its website, is to verify information. As Sharon says the staffer told her they make a phone call to the defendant, put notes in the file, and inform the court. That's not verifying his statement. That's just taking his statement. Mm -hmm. no, I, I, this is, that's, it's almost getting silly. Though Sheriff Chris Nano supported Pima County's effort to reduce the jail population, he's now highly critical of it. I reached out to pretrial services for an on-camera interview, but once again, they denied my request. I had asked, how does PTS supervise suspects under its watch? I got this emailed response saying part of pretrial's monitoring program is informing the court of any reported violations of conditions of release. In Gracie's case, she had to report the violations. Sharon says not only did PTS not verify information, a staffer told her something else that shocked her. Basically, in the period of time they're under pretrial services control, it's kind of a no man's land. The staffer told her pretrial services has no authority or jurisdiction or ability to follow up. They're limited on their ability to enforce until the individual is put into a, either the control of the prison system or the control of um, adult pr probation services. So what's the point of being under pretrial supervision? Right, right. That's my concern. But that's not all of it. 
The document reveals Angel has not maintained contact with pretrial services at the frequency directed. But I don't know that I'd call that being monitored. I don't think the judge, whoever the judge is, said, hey, I want you to stay in touch with pretrial services, but do it in whenever you feel like it. Sharon says she pushed the Pima County Attorney's Office to step in, and a prosecutor set up a hearing with the judge. The judge didn't send Angel to jail for the violations. Rather, he extended the boundary from three blocks to two miles. But Gracie still can't rest easy because, Sharon explained, the judge had been told at the hearing that Angel's housing situation is unstable at the moment. Do you have faith in the system? No, and it, it's a scary thing. I'm scared. I need you to come do something because they, they just keep giving him chances. They keep saying, it's okay, just... Just ignore him, just go somewhere else. Why aren't you just saying, okay, you're going to jail, you violated this? Like, it's like they're protecting the wrong person. An Angel's sentencing on the strangulation charge is scheduled next month, March 13th, and we'll let you know what happens.